the gaming industry of all industries within blockchain is just taking off mm -hmm. beyond belief. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see this going, especially with Immutable? Yeah. So um, I believe always that gaming goes in the direction of what's best for players. Like the best player experience will win out. And that's what we've seen the you know evolution in the games industry. There's been a lot of different phases starting from arcade, going into console, going into free to play and then mobile, et cetera. And you know, where players go is what's most convenient for them, what the best player experience is, where the best games are. And so I think that Web3 is just the, the next evolution of that. It's like the technology that will enable the best player experience. It's not that it's anything, you know, terribly scary for gamers as they might feel <laughs> right. like it is. It actually enables them to be able to own their digital assets. And once that, once that comes through as the main premise that they have control over the things that they love and the way that they can um, engage with content that they love, then you know people will start to come into Web3 gaming. So um, I think that the, the potential is massive and that that move and shift is happening. And right now what we're seeing is that a lot of folks are now building you know incredible game experiences. Maybe like some of the first iterations of Web3 games were, you know, Know, trials and tests that were you know playing with different kinds of models that perhaps weren't sustainable as we saw and what you're seeing now is a focus back on really fun engaging experiences made by amazing game developers and so those things will start to roll out I think this year um, and you know we'll start seeing big large-scale kind of triple-a experiences um, in the coming years and so for immutable we're purely focused on games, you know, unlike other folks in the space, you know, working on a, ver a variety of sectors, gaming is, is our core. Um, we started out actually as a, as a gaming company with a, with a small game and have two in-house IPs. Um, and then now are partnering with, um, on my side, partnering with a few games that we have really high conviction in that are okay. very high quality and going to market together. So um, I'll be launching three games this year. They're really wow. excited Amazing. to deliver to players. All right, no, yeah. so there's uh, Mutable X and yep. there's Mutable Studios. Uh -huh. um, X is more about the NFTs, correct? So people can own and hopefully transfer them potentially to various games mm -hmm. inside the ecosystem, right? Yeah. yeah, so essentially that side of the business is the platform side, and that is really the technology layer that okay. is enabling people to own their NFTs and you know craft and mint and do all these things. That side is the one that is building solutions that make onboarding easier, like IMX Passport that we announced, which enables single sign-on, like email, login, custodial wallets, makes everything much easier for players. Um, and also creates the developer tools that allows game companies and game developers to be able to seamlessly integrate to, to the blockchain. So that's the, the that platform side of the business. And then our studio or game side of the business is you know what is focused on um, our in-house or like partnership games. So we're working on uh, we have two in-house IPs, and then working on three partnership games right now. But in addition to that, we have you know hundreds, I think maybe thousands of, of <laughs> games building on okay. Immutable right now. Um, that you know we're also very excited to to see come very to market. Very cool. Very cool. So yeah. would you say that it's like a stepped way of getting towards Web3? It's like if you're using SSO mm -hmm. in some respects, right? Yeah. It's sort of Web 2.5 right. to get people onboarded. And then yeah. eventually they'll have the ability to, if they wanted to run with the whole Web3 via MetaMask or whatever they want to do. Yeah. Um, to better leverage these things. Is that accurate? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. And you know, what we're seeing right now is that it's difficult to get mass adoption, right? When there are 12 steps that you have to take in order to just get into a game and create <laughs> yes. a wallet and you have to remember your seed phrase and like that for you know, hundreds of millions of players as well as billions of players, which is what we want to reach. You know, there are three billion gamers in the world, right? <laughs> There's no way all those people are going to do that kind of onboarding. And so we need to create the simple type of onboarding that everyone is used to, that anyone can use. Um, and that's really one of the key steps to enhancing our audience. Okay, yeah. no, that, that makes a lot of sense. So one of the things that's sort of known in the gaming industry is that sometimes there are certain groups inside that maybe 
hesitant to yeah. go down the road of NFTs yeah. and, and they're not used to that, right? Yeah. So how do you get over that hump? Yeah, I definitely came from that. So I was previously at Riot Games yeah. and you know, there's definitely like that, that core, you know, game developers that um, have a bad opinion about NFTs. And I understand that, right? That's legitimate because what they have seen is yeah. is the bad stuff. <laughs> yes. They've seen a lot of scams and all of that. But every new technology has that phase. Like the start of the internet was also very scammy, right? It took a lot to get to this point where where people are educated and of course there's still scams, but you know people know how to navigate them. Um, and so, some of that will will change it's just the start of, of technology and that that initial negative reaction came from those experiences that they had which were legitimate and what they saw in the market but once again like as they see the actual value proposition which is that it's best for players because they get to actually own and control their assets like why wouldn't you know, any other part of the world, if you buy something, you own oh, it, yeah. but why not? <laughs> why <laughs> I know, not I know. in game? In, 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 so that, that I think will start to change once people see real games that are actually good that prove that value proposition. So does Dookie Dash? Is that a game that you, <laughs> you did you ever play that or see it? <laughs> no, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. I yes, never Board played it. Yeah, yeah, Dookie yeah, Dash, yes, which are yes. their eventual entree into yes, yes. their metaverse, which yeah. brings me up it brings up the question that I'm kinda of curious about. Yeah. Are you going in that direction at all? Is it something that you're using? I know it's somewhat of a buzzword, but is metaverse something that you all see as the future in the gaming industry? Yeah, I mean I I think that it will eventually happen. We have to see, you know, where there is that kind of mass scale audience where metaverse does make sense. Um, right now, like you say, it's more of a buzzword and like this broad concept people have than <laughs> a, an actual reality that we're seeing. I mean, the best example is probably like a Roblox, right? Where it, it is effectively a lot of people in the community building things and participating. And so in that way, I do think that, you know, that that concept is proven. And I think people have a wide variety of what they think a metaverse means. As the, you know, <laughs> yes. some people think that it means we're living in a virtual world all the time. Some people think other things. Um, I do think that you know, one of the first ways that we'll start to see it is that game developers will start to create an interconnected universe of their IPs. So if a game developer has five, ten different games, they'll find a way to connect those, connect the players, connect the assets, and it's easier for them to do that with, you know, blockchain assets. Yeah. yeah. Out of curiosity, and I'm not 100% certain about this, so forgive my ignorance, yeah. but when it comes to blockchains, mm -hmm. are you all just all in on Ethereum? Are there other areas that you're looking at as well, expanding into? Yeah, we're fully focused on Ethereum. We think, you know, after assessing um, all the, the potential options, we really believe that Ethereum offers the best security layer and that, you know, you, you cannot compromise on security. Like for us, you know, we're, we want to work with large game developers that have hundreds of millions of players and you cannot have a risk of having those assets stolen or having a scam, anything like that. So Ethereum offers that security layer that we really trust. And the good news is that Chappella actually worked. It's the final upgrade. Uh -huh. came out yeah, yesterday yeah. at yeah. 630 or yeah. something like that. Uh -huh. So people were finally able to pull money out of their stake right. uh, the E. Yeah. All right, so maybe one of the last questions that I'm really curious about is uh, in April of last year, mm -hmm. um, OpenAI came out with Dolly, Dolly 2, uh -huh. and it was this idea of generative art, right? Uh -huh. So you get to yeah. the point of put in a few pieces of text yeah. and all of a sudden it's generating yeah. art. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious, in the gaming industry, you think yeah. that's going to kind of revolutionize the way that people are building games, how fast they are yeah. to, to market, things of that nature. Is that something that, that's being discussed? Yeah, it definitely is. And people are, are looking into it um, because like you say, that, that speed to market is something that can be improved. You know, definitely what we don't want to do is uh, impact artists. Like artists are still yes. really important and all of that generative AI is coming originally from artists' work, right? Yes. They're pulling from it. And so we want to make sure that 
artists are still a core part of the industry and I don't think that there's any risk that they, they won't be. We always need artists, we need their creativity and their vision to be able to create this stuff, but it also enables them to do things faster. Like, for example, you know, if you have um, like a, an asset that's uh, like a card in a game, then you can have AI help you create a different iteration of that that's like a different rarity or a different power, etc. But maybe, you know, you don't need an artist or the artist themselves doesn't want to like spend time recoloring it. You can just have AI help you on that. So I think it, it's really a tool that helps artists work faster. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. That makes sense. All right. So you mentioned two games that are potentially coming out. Anything you want to say about them? Yeah, actually three games. Uh, three? Yeah, Sorry, forgive yeah, me. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> well, I, you know what? Actually, four. <laughs> so it's like that. AI is already I producing know, the game I just know, like that. <laughs> so um, the the IPs that we own, there's Gods and Chain, which is already out, and then there's Guild of Guardians, which folks have been waiting for. So that that um, you know we're working on and uh, very very excited about. Looking forward to getting that out this year. So that's um, you know coming to players soon, and that yeah, is uh, an, an RPG that will be mobile, and I think mobile that's Web huge. three games will be yes. huge, definitely. It'll be then with the way that we really onboard a large number of players in across different markets as well. You know, there are a lot of markets that are mobile first where people don't yeah. have PCs or access Absolutely. to PCs. And so um, really excited for that new audience. And then for the partner games we're working on, um, the first one is called Shardbound. It's by a team called Bazooka Tango. Okay. They were the founders of Super Evil Megacorp and created Vainglory. Right. Right. And so they're really much um, love disrupting the, the game space and want to go where new technology is, want to go where you know players will have better experiences, and so um, they are working on a game that's like a, a hex-based, uh, turn-based tactics game oh. with a collectible element. Okay. So if you know things like XCOM or Final Fantasy yeah. Tactics, um, wow. it's really, really exciting. It has a big lore and fantasy and a great story behind it. Um, <laughs> and if you're a, a deep strategy and tactics player, um, this game will really be for you. And it's like something that I'm very excited about. As soon as I played the demo, I was like, I love this game. <laughs> I love this game so much. So um, that's Shortbound. The next one is called um, Metalcore, and that's okay. one that we have here All on right. the demo uh, floor here at Check NFT NYC. Out. Yeah, okay. please. It is a um, multiplayer mech-based shooter. You can choose, you know, large-scale mechs. You can also be infantry. You can have, you can fly um, planes as well. Um, yeah, and it's a, uh, it's a very, very, very fun yeah. um, <laughs> action shooter with a lot of strategy of, you know, how to how to win um, your main missions and like working with a team. So. Uh, very very excited for that and that's also coming this year and then the third one is called infinite victory it's by um Fry Studios. They okay. previously had a game called Ultimate Rivals that was on Apple Arcade, but it's a multi-sports IP, fast-paced arcade-style game, mainly a basketball game, but um, will have other sports elements in them. That's really unique, and it has this like futuristic, like Tron-style vibe. <laughs> yes, all right, all right. And so, yeah, really excited that we have a wide variety of genres because that's another thing that we've been focusing on. Where you know, initially, I think a lot of the the web3 games that we saw were of just like a few genres yes. and you know that's a certain audience but it limits your audience because card players don't necessarily like overlap with certain other players and so having new genres is um, going to really expand web3 to a, a wider variety of players and, and get these games in front of them. Amazing yeah. wide gamut congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you so much for your time I really yeah. appreciate it. I appreciate it too. Thank All you. Right.